guys, a little more progress on the Supra with the LS swap. All is on video. Click. Out. and now we're working on um, getting all the fuel lines in the car so originally on the Supra uh, right here there's the um, uh, fuel filter this is the fuel line and uh, some other uh, fuel lines and things that's a brake line over there but there's also some fuel lines and some evap stuff and it's very very close to the headers on the V8 swap which is of course what we don't uh, really like and also I had to remove the filter over here uh, because that's like totally in the way of the header. So where we're gonna go now is on the other side of the um, chassis rail and we're going in over there to the engine bay. Obviously this is in the wheel well, but we're gonna make a plate to cover up over here because the wheel is nowhere near uh, close to that uh, line. Um, what we've done to accommodate that is drill a bunch of holes in the frame rails and we put these riff nuts in there. If you're drilling holes in a chassis, it's super important that you properly um, guard them from corrosion. As you can see, this is a special hose that we use, which uh, sprays a, a pattern 360 degrees. We use tactile ML and it's super important that you um, fill up the, the um, chassis rail with this stuff uh, and prevent uh, corrosion. We also modified uh, the subframe a little bit, as you can see over here. We removed uh, a little section of it, both sides of course. Um, so basically that lip uh, needs to be cut open. And then of course the subframe seam opens up. So we welded that up. And that's all for the headers uh, to clear. Um, the area where you see um, where we remove the paint that's where we um, test fitted the header. So what I usually do is I clearance them um, and that's usually about half an inch or about a little over one centimeter. And we just make sure that they stay more than one centimeter away from the chassis at all times. So that's the motor fully compressed in the rubbers and stuff. Um, and then we still have some space for the headers. So it's all very, very, very tight. You see over here too, we had the clearance a little bit over there. And there's two different tunnels in the Supras. This is the small one because this car was not a turbo car. So this tunnel is a lot smaller than on the turbo cars. And that's why it's very, very difficult to fit the T56 transmission in it. Um, we had to remove, uh, as you can see, we had the clearance over there uh, where you see those orange markings. Obviously, we're all going to grind that down and uh, paint that correctly, um, but it's very, very, very tight. And uh, yeah, so all the other Supra T56 swaps that we see are uh, turbo cars, which have the bigger tunnel. So here's the header design. Uh, we went for a single exhaust on this car because the client wanted to have the original look. And I kind of agree with that. And we made um, what's probably the first set of LS swap long tubes for a right-hand drive Supra. All the headers from the swap kits that were available are shorties. Uh, doesn't really work for this application. 
Uh, we choose um, a bigger diameter than is absolutely necessary for an LS1, but in the future, if you want to do heads or cams or make it rev a little more, don't want to redo the headers. A lot of work in these things. Um, obviously, it's very difficult because on the right-hand side, you have the starter and the steering box. Uh, we first made these things from steel, and then we can always later turn them into uh, stainless. Just see how it works, see what she does on the dyno. Um, and then um, if it all works, we can always make them out of uh, stainless steel. So here's a little video explaining on all the trouble we had with the Siki pan. Uh, it ended up not fitting whatsoever. Um, when I put the pan on for the first time, it was lifting uh, as much as my pinky between the block and, um, and the pan. And it was because the pickup tube over here, as you can see, it's 100% touching the bottom. And this was basically how it was sitting with another pinky. So let's say half an inch between the block and the pan. And this thing obviously needs to have a clearance, needs to sit up uh, in order to work. And as you can see, this um, whole plate over here was never gonna fit at all. We had to cut, it was just basically this circle that was cut out. There's no way that's ever gonna work. It means this thing needs to sit somewhere over here, which is totally not possible. Also this section inside here that you can see with the trap doors, um, that was not gonna fit at all because they made the trapdoor section sit completely in the middle of the pan. Um, but that was never gonna work uh, because this pod, the pickup of the oil uh, pump, doesn't sit in the middle. So the trap doors actually couldn't, the trap doors would, uh, this thing would be sitting here and the trap doors couldn't even work at all. Also over here you can see that they made a notch in this flange, but this section over here uh, was, this section was simply continued like that. So they, this looked exactly like this before. So there was no way that that pickup was ever gonna fit. So we um, re-welded it over there on the outside. So that's like one of those huge problems and there was not a lot of support from them. They basically said that I had to bash this thing uh, with a hammer to make it, uh, yeah, so it would need about an inch of hammering to fit, which made no, no sense at all because this piece sits on the main cap and this sits on the oil pan. They said, yeah, it's probably a problem with your motor, which obviously it wasn't because we tried it on two different motors. And then they made me pay for another pickup tube. So they said, hey, we tried it back at Siki with another pickup tube and it fits totally fine. I said, well, send me that pickup tube then. Made me pay like a hundred bucks to send that pickup tube. But then the problem still didn't work. We still had to clearance everything over here, of course. Um, so I was really disappointed with it, doesn't fit at all. And this was also riveted on the trapdoor section. We welded it over here. So um, don't get that pan. Don't forget to take a look at our website as well, einzel.nl. We ship worldwide, of course, Wisefab, Feel Suspension, our own brand Einzel, gearboxes, quick change differentials, axles, all kinds of things. A lot of fabrication components, of course, air jacks, subframes for quick change, you name it. Drop us an email and we'll hook you up. So an often overlooked thing is the travel of the throttle body in relation to the throttle pedal. If you do a motor swap, uh, it's very important to check that. The way to do that is to um, hook up a cable to the throttle body. You put a little mark on the cable where it's um, hitting this... Um, bracket and then you pull it all the way open and when you're doing that you're gonna have an idea of how far it stretches and just measure that and it looks like over here for this uh, LS1 it's about uh, 57 millimeters that it's um, moving itself so that 57 uh, millimeter is exactly the same uh, travel that you want to have on the point where the throttle pedal pulls on the cable so it's not always the travel of the pedal because there's uh, often um, leverage in there so uh, if your throttle pedal moves 57 millimeter it doesn't mean that your actual cable is also going to move 57 millimeter so you really want to measure how far the throttle cable moves if you uh, give the pedal a full throttle 
So since the throttle cable um, that the Supra has from the factory is too short for the LS application, we made some changes. I made this um, tab over here because the Supra um, has a hole that's basically the wrong way around for the throttle cable. This is an aftermarket throttle cable we got, which has this connection, uh, which is gonna go in here. Just like that. Um, it's very important for me to be able to easily remove the um, throttle cable. So that's why this is an M8 bolt that we use to weld this tab on. So you can still put an um, 13 spanner here, 13 spanner here and remove it easily and leave this thing in the car. It's actually a very nice, simple um, throttle pedal. I would consider using this for uh, different applications. Very easy to mount it on the, on the firewall. It's a nice spring. Um, yeah, it's, if you're looking for a hanging pedal, it's also important um, if you're doing a, um, engine conversion or something that this point, the pivot point and the point where the throttle cable attaches, it, you would be able to vary that because sometimes it doesn't match. The way you check it with the pedal is um, just the other way around. So you set up your cable. In this case, it's a nice long cable, so it makes it all the way over here and then you're going to push the throttle pedal so it goes in all the way and then you mark your dot let it come all the way back out and then you measure what that distance is in this case it's a little bit more than our 57 that's obviously nice of course because it means that we can work with the pedal stop so this is going to be um, 62 millimeters that this travel is so it means we have a luxury problem. It means that the throttle cable setup in this car um, is enough to operate um, the LS1 throttle body. On a lot of cars, it's uh, not the case. On a lot of cars, you need to come up with a solution because uh, on cars with like smaller motors and smaller throttle bodies, it's usually um, between uh, 40 and 50 millimeter travel on the cable. Um, if you're pressing the pedal, uh, the pedal itself, if you look at BMW, the top of the pedal does 60 millimeter travel. So that's what feels very natural to people. But again, what the pedal does is not the exact same thing as what the throttle cable does, because there's obviously um, some leverage in there on almost all cars. So that's how I, um, never mind that wire, we didn't do that. So we're gonna remove that. So this is how I set it up. We like that this cable is the same look as our clutch cable back there. So it all looks as the same braided look. Um, this is a very nice um, adjustment system over here. Really like that. And I like that this is um, with an Allen key, you can remove that. So we're gonna sit that, set this to the correct length. Um, should be about um, this length. But of course, when the motor is in there, we're gonna be trying that. It's one of those things that um, takes a little bit of time and um, we were really unlucky with the original Supra setup because it was maybe a couple centimeters too short. 